Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Investing. I'm Albert, the host, and today we're going to continue the banking sector. We're going to do five stocks. So the platform that I'm going to be using to review these stocks are from Webull. And apparently the Webull app, I guess, uh, for the update that they had, uh, the actual platform, I don't think when they first updated it, it was a full updated version, but in the past few days, I've seen more features, so it's just way too many features for me to go over, but um, again, I'm going to do that on my own time, so we're just going to continue with the banking sector, and then hopefully we can understand this and go over this as simple as we can, so... I'm going to do, I'll do a little bit of technical and then I'll do a little bit of fundamental. So we're going to start from the bottom stock and then work our way all the way up. And first things first, today is June 11th, Saturday. It is 6.30 p.m. on the dot on Eastern Standard Time. So for the first stock that I have that we're going over, it is ESQ. So we have Esquire Financial Holdings. So... I like to look at the five year, and for the past five years, we have here, uh, it looks pretty flat at about 23. This stock has been going up ever since, I'd say, since late, well, fourth quarter, 2021. And let's look at the last three months. Actually, let's look at the last year. So ever since around September, it's been going up. It's gone down and then it's slightly been going up. Uh, let's see how much capital appreciation it has gotten. So apparently this stock is doing pretty good just by looking at the numbers. Uh, it's actually fairly valued from what I'm seeing. It's fairly valued. They do pay a dividend. And again, uh, for the last five years, the average or the flat rate that I like to call, that I like to call it, is about uh, 24, 24 bucks. So with this past year, ever since the start of 2022 stocks have been going down so to be honest this stock is not doing too bad so fundamentally this stock is not doing too bad it looks like it's doing pretty good um we're gonna go into uh, a little bit of analysis so we have here for quant rating we have it at the highest oh that's a first i don't see any ratings for the income but for momentum i have it as a seven so this stock is actually uh gaining popularity as from what i'm seeing yes i see it uh for the volume i guess for the last day it's been pretty low but over time you know if the stock has been going up especially for the past month that gives it a good trend so we have a volume of twenty one thousand. that's really really low extremely low so uh, we have earnings. I don't really care about the earnings as of this year. I think I'm going to focus on, even though we're in a downtrending market, a bear market, we're still going to look at stocks that are still going up. Um, yes, you can short the market and bet down. But again, uh, not everybody has the privilege to, and it's actually easier to short a stock than to actually be bullish on it. I mean, I know how to short stocks. I just don't have enough capital to do it. And it costs more anyway, but it's just easier to do. But anyhow, the numbers are looking pretty good for the stock. So we're going to look at the last four. We're going to look at the last... I'm going to look at it annually. I guess the, the, the app is still sort of having trouble. I like to look at annual results as you always know me as and, and see me doing 
uh, analysis on. So I guess I'm not getting uh, annual results like the way I want to actually compare it and be more accurate. So I guess we're going to skip that. We're going to look at whatever we have annual. So net income for 2021 have been going up. Total revenue, I don't know. That should be on there. I don't know why I'm not getting that. Operating income, sometimes they don't show it, but I don't know why I'm not getting uh, revenue. Uh, for the balance sheet, they're probably having bug issues, I guess. So for the balance sheet, it looks slightly lower than other banks. Usually they're close to 90. This one is at 87. As we can see, their debt has been going up uh, slightly. So I don't know what their plans are for 2022. I mean, apparently they're doing pretty good for this year. Um, I'll be surprised if the stock goes up the next six months. And um, the only way to do that is to watch list it and keep track of it. So for cash flow, it, I just want to see if they're positive or negative. They have a lot of cash flow from what I'm seeing. Um, they're looking pretty good, pretty stable. Now let's just look at the dividends real quick. They started to pay dividends. I think that was the deciding factor. So ever since May of 2022, that's when I guess the stock has been going up. So we're going to look at this date at 513. Then we're going to look at it on the chart. So I think that is definitely a, de a deciding factor for definitely for institutions and for uh, even regular investors. So they paid a dividend of nine cents. And let's look at the chart of May for this year. And the dividend yield is at uh, one point, basically 1% 1 dividend. So we're expecting them to pay 36 cents. I mean, the first quarter has passed, so uh, really it's going to be lower, that, lower than that. But that's just the estimate for four quarters so actually we're gonna get less than that we're gonna be getting actually 24 so apparently we're gonna look at the may ever since may so we're gonna look at the last three months so it said around uh so right here ever since that dividend payment so the stock has gone down but then as we can see here um actually i remember this, uh i remember May 18th. That was a big sell-off day. And for the stock, it didn't look like it sold off. I mean, it did, but it didn't go past their prior month low. So that was pretty good. And then they shot right up from $34 all the way to $38, which is pretty good. A $4 increase in uh, stock price within the month. Um, that's pretty good to be on track. So as we can see here, again, they've dropped down back to three dollars within the past month so this stock might be volatile who knows again it's hard to say even though uh the volume is low i guess the turnover rate um seems low at the moment who knows if it might pick back up but uh this stock looks um pretty good uh for the short term, I would say. I wouldn't say long term. So, uh, technicals. Would I add this to a watch list? ESQ. Um, I would say yeah. I'll give them a chance. I mean, they had the momentum um, for a little bit. You saw the ratings for the quants. And we'll see how they're doing with that. So, we have a five-year. This stock looks pretty flat. No volume. I don't really like it looking at the numbers so automatically i'm gonna say no um again even when i'm neutral about it, it it's you know it's still fair to add the stock to a watch list just because you never know uh what might come up from the stock any news and stuff i mean if they're i want to say constantly but if they're doing good for the most part of the month then you know something's got to give so it's always a good idea to add underrated stocks so for the momentum, we have a seven for, well, actually for the value. So that's telling me for the price of this stock, that's the best factor, deciding factor 
or they're stock, and I can see why, and there's really low volume. But, okay, it looks like they're beating earnings. That's fine. But what about their annual? Okay, I'm getting annual results here, so that's pretty good. Um, that's pretty good. So everything's been going up. I don't have net margins. Their debt. I would like to see companies lower their debt. Um, that would be a really good move on a company's part. So book value has been increasing and cash flow has stayed about the same the past two years. It was higher in the past four to five years ago. So hopefully they're still positive. I'm sure they're positive on cash flow. Uh, again, I like to see the debt go down, even though we just saw the debt just now. So operating cash flow and investing. Then we have, so these guys have tons of cash flow. I wouldn't say tons, but uh, they're doing pretty decent. They're doing pretty decent um, for themselves. And again, now we have uh, ratings here. So um, this is definitely a huge deciding factor. Really, really good uh, thing to see. So I, I haven't seen ranking systems like this in a while. So ever since they have taken that off for like the past two years i've actually been doing my own ranking system so um in a way uh it's still nice to see this but i don't think it's useful for me anymore because i'm not used to seeing it anymore and i already have the information above here anyway so it's nice that they added it i mean i've been wanting this for the longest but now it's like i don't know to be honest um it's kind of useless to me right now because I already have the info anyway. So, um, I mean, it's still nice to see, but I guess I'm not going to use it as much now since I've become better. So, I'll still take a look at it, but we'll see if it's uh, any useful for other people. So, for the dividend stocks, it looks like they did do an increase. So, that's pretty good. And... Um, I'm looking at the market cap. They're very, very small cap. Um, so for this company, they look they look like they're doing okay, but um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Um, there's just so many banks out there, um, and they're beating earnings. I, I guess you can add them to the watch list. Well, actually, no, because I mean. Let me look at the chart again. I forgot. Yeah, it looks pretty flat from the chart. So, again, um, I'm going to say no just because uh, they're so close to their five-year. So, we're going to say no to that one and move on to the next one. So, next one is BWB, Bridgewater Bank Shares. So, fundamentally, uh, it looks like they're doing okay. Volume is pretty low. They look like they're valued okay. Capital appreciation looks okay. They're not paying a dividend. So in a way, that's pretty good. So hopefully they can grow the business for that. For the year, they look like they're on a downtrend. So I'm going to say no. And the market cap is at $437 million. So they're halfway to a billion-dollar company. And we're going to move on to the analysis for that. So quant ratings... We have the highest quant rating for this is the quality and uh, not too far from it is the growth. So just basically the difference of that is like a one point rating. So the quality and growth for this stock, that's what it is telling me. So if it's quality, what do they actually do? Let's see if they specialize uh, and anything particular, or maybe uh, let's look at their revenue. Hopefully, they have something to show for it, and nothing. Um, I don't like their balance sheet. It's hard to like. It's it's honestly hard to like a balance sheet from a bank because they're so highly levered. 
And so I want to see why this is a quality stock. I'm just going to read about it and see uh, what's going on. So let's see what they do exactly. Or if they're in a certain location. So it looks like uh, Bridgewater Risk Management pools resources with several other insurance companies and spread a limited amount of risk among themselves. So I guess they partner with insurance agencies or companies and I guess they take a cut from that. So that's definitely a good business, but um, they're not really diversified. I want to see more reasons as to why this stock seems to be uh, quality or growth. Um, the only news I see is this one up top from Zach's uh, media. So I don't see anything other than that. Again, I like to read the description just to get an analysis. So we're going to read a little bit about this company real quick. Um, just by looking at the numbers, it's hard to see why. Um, so they ca it says they carry... They carry above average risk and volatility um and again we're on a downtrending market so i don't see why um this stock can grow anytime soon and again i could be wrong but um we're gonna still look at it and it says they consistently beat the market um well within when they have low margins like that and low numbers um it's fairly easy Especially when you have, you know, generating cash flow. So, just by reading about it, it's not always 100% certainty. But it's good to get insight about it. It says the cash flow growth is higher than many of the peers. So that's what I'm reading. I guess that's where the growth comes in. But I'll tell you this. I think if they can manage that cash flow for this year and next year during hard times, this stock can really grow. And I don't think they're going to do acquisitions or anything. But again, if they're on pace to do well for the next two years, um, this stock might be worth taking a look at. So, again, I'm going to say no right now, but, uh, again, we can revisit this stock in the future and see what potential it has. So, we have two left, RNDB, Randolph Bank. Um, look at that. Wow. So, you have a really big drop and a really big gain. That is insane. So, we're talking, I mean... I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm just looking at the chart. So you went from like $20 to like 26 and change in a matter of, let's say, um, so in a matter of like under six months, I'm not really crazy about this stock. Um, by looking at the numbers, it looks overvalued. They are paying a dividend. Um, it may have potential for growth. Um, the market cap, I'm not crazy about. And again, I could be wrong. So we're going to look at the analysis. Let's see what else, what else I have for the chart. Yeah, I don't have nothing else for the chart because this is all... Um, laid out differently now we have like cost distribution and i don't really care about that so it looks like i'm gonna say they have a lot of momentum or for the most part yeah i figured that was a higher number but if that's the rating they gave um that's usually i i like results from Weeble, I think they're pretty accurate. So, earnings growth. They're comparing that from the last quarter to prior years. Negative 84%. 
Uh, short term, medium term, and long term for the technicals. They're showing they're bullish. Uh, that's hard to believe. I'm not taking that as for certain. It's really hard to believe. Um, I mean, just because of this bump right here. And it's slightly going down, so I don't know. Um, again, it's overvalued. It doesn't have a lot of uh, support for volume or popularity. So, so far, I'm going to say no. Earnings, they haven't even remained the same. Estimates are going lower and results are going lower. So... Again, I'm not getting annual estimates for the return on assets and their earnings and, and you know, cash flow and debt and margins, net margins especially. So, uh, especially the revenue. For some reason, not getting the revenue. So, net income has dropped. Wow, that's a big drop. That's a $10 million drop. Um, yeah, I'm going to say no. Even if they are cash flow... I cash flow positive. Uh, I'm going to say no. Yeah. And I, again, I don't need to look at these ratings because I'm doing my own analysis anyway. And um, they have the information provided anyway. But again, it's still good to look at. But I'm just not looking at, at it as much. So, okay. I can see why it might have some interest so in february of this year they paid a special dividend and that same day they paid a dividend of two dollars and fifteen cents so that was just a payment of four four dollars and fifteen cents for the year so wow that's huge that is uh tremendous so if we were to use uh let me do $4 into 26. Let me get a calculator real quick. So we're going to do $4. Uh, and, and again, that's only for this first quarter. So we don't know how much of the continuation of the dividend payments are going to be. So I have 15.38%. So, so far, just with this alone, this has paid over 15%. Why can't I draw a circle? Oh. It's because it's I have the, the pen writing so thin. So, so 15% so far they've paid uh, for dividends. So... This was a tremendous stock. This was a very lucky and a once-in-a-lifetime stock. Um, again, 15%. That's pretty high for a dividend yield for the year. And then, who knows? Um, again, I could be wrong. They might pay another special dividend. Um, I'll admit that. I'll be the first one to say that. But um, I just don't see support for the stock. I think this is a value trap, I would say. Um, just because of the flatness of the chart. And yes, they paid the dividends and stuff, but um, I need to see more support and resistance, at least some volatility. And again, it's good that they paid, but um, I just want to see more consistency from this stock. So again, I'm going to say no right now, no for a watch list, but maybe in the future they can do better and we can revisit this stock later on. So last stock that I have, CHCO, City Holdings, I believe. Oh, wow, that's very, very choppy. Very, very choppy. Even for the five-year, very, very choppy. Very volatile. Uh, but they look like they're doing pretty good. Um, fairly valued, what I see. They're a billion-dollar company, so that's not bad. 52-week high and low, a difference of about $15. So I wouldn't say this has my interest, but... Um, so far, this company seems okay. Um, I'm not scared of the volatility. A lot of people look at those chops and like they want to stay away from it. Um, I really don't mind it. I'm used to seeing stuff like that. So, 
anything that has to do with stocks coming my way, I just love a challenge and I embrace it. So I'm, I'm still going to go after it, whether, you know, it's a crap stock or good. I mean, that's just what I do. I like to look at it and analyze anyway. So the analysis for the quant ratings that I have, the highest rating that I have for this stock is quality. Uh, I, I kind of said that even before looking at the rating. Um, again, I do see the quality in the numbers just by looking at it. Uh, let me see their cash flow. Uh, yes, they remain flat. That's typical that everybody's going to have a downtrend for this year. And we have, let's see. Um, I want to look at their earnings are pretty good. I think that's why. And then, have they reported the Q2 yet? No, they haven't reported Q2. But they beat. This is like a growth stock. This stock. See, earnings like that, when they're beating like that? I mean, and what are the dividends payments? Are they increasing dividend payments? So, the, uh, I see $0.04 from 2019 to 2020. A one cent raise, a two cent raise. Okay, it looks okay. Um, pretty decent. So we have, let's look at the financials again and continue looking at that. Um, it almost looked like a growth stock, but apparently they've just been slowing down. Uh, but they're still doing pretty good. So let's look at the annual ROA. So slightly went down. That's not bad. Earnings per share. Net margins. I wish I had net margins and they're not showing me. The debt, slight, slight increase, not even barely anything. Book value, cash flow per share has gone up really, really good. Cash reserve. So we have, they're not giving me revenue. Um, they're highly levered, but I could tell they have cash. Yeah, they're doing pretty good on cash. Um, I wish there was a cash flow rating, but the other thing I can use, yeah, I don't have a cash flow rating to compare. I wish I could match cash flow, but comparing their earnings, they're ranked 66 for earnings let me see net margins they rank 10 for margins well they must be tied for 10th place so yeah there's a lot of people tied for 10th place and this list is long very very long Oh, that's because they don't have enough numbers here. But, um, yeah, I guess... I guess this company... Um, I would watch list it. It seems pretty good. I would definitely watch list this stock. So, I would say yes to this one. So, again, that's all I have for you guys. And you can stay tuned for the next one. I'm actually going to do more short videos... So stay tuned for the recap in a shorter video. Again, like, subscribe, or comment. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.